prior to starting Oculus, I worked in an army funded research lab on a virtual reality exposure therapy program for soldiers with post-traumatic stress disorder. The idea being that you could expose these soldiers to the types of environments that they had problems coping with and that they could learn to cope with them and they could learn uh, coping strategies so that they didn't have to be so dependent on, on drugs and uh, just having a bad time. Uh, and while I was there, I realized that a lot of the technology we were using was really bad. I realized that the process for obtaining new technology was really bad. And the whole time that I was at Oculus, I couldn't stop thinking about that. And I, I tried to help with a few groups. I tried to work with, uh, with some interesting branches in the government that were doing some cool simulation stuff. And the process was just really, really bad. Uh, so when I decided that I wanted to work in the national security space, the approach that I decided that I wanted to take was a product-focused approach. So rather than going to our customers with a white paper or a sketch and saying, hey, here's an idea, here's this rough concept we have, we want the taxpayer to pay for all of the research and development. Uh, I wanted to make an approach where we're using our own money to decide what to build, how to build it, when it's done, and then selling it to the customer as an actual product. The problem with that approach, and the reason that it's not a scalable model for innovation for the entire Department of Defense, is that it relies on me having a ton of money. And this is not a unique problem. If you look at the private sector, there are only two defense companies. I'm not trying to discourage you guys, by the way. If it sounds like I'm being a little downbeat, just, I'm just being real with you. There are only two unicorns in the entire venture back, like venture, venture backed communi company community that have become unicorns working with the DOD. And that's SpaceX and Palantir. And as much as I love SpaceX and I love their mission, you have to admit that their mission is not defense. You know, their defense work is incidental to their mission of getting to Mars. Now, what do SpaceX and Palantir both have in common? The only two unicorns in the defense product space. Can anybody, can anybody throw it out there? Yes. <laughs> that is a really good one. So that is one thing that they have in common. Uh, they, they both, both of them had to sue their customers and try to get the government to actually abide by the guidelines that the government themselves set. Yes, we had another guess right here. Both PayPal founders. Both PayPal founders, but even more relevant, they both had billionaire co-founders. So it turns out, like, you know, what, what, what's the old joke that you can apply to anything? What's the best way to become a millionaire defense contractor? That's right, you start as a billionaire. And so, the, I, so, so, so this is an approach that you can take when you have an enormous amount of capital. And I did this because I felt like I didn't have a choice. I mean, I, I, had, I was friends with a lot of the other people who had been made very wealthy by Facebook. And some of them uh, got into collecting air-cooled Porsches, and some of them are just cruising around the Mediterranean. And I felt like I had a duty to work on these types of problems because I'm very afraid of what other nations are doing relative to us. I'm very worried that we're falling behind. And I'm worried that there's a lot of talent that's going going underutilized, working on problems that don't matter, like search engine optimization and advertising optimization and advertising optimization. I couldn't take it anymore. 